Yo, hey everyone, Brian with you from the game Gamecom, and we're playing some more Disco Elysium, and let's get this body freaking cut down this time. So, we need to talk about getting him down again. Uh, can someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? Uh, what was that about processing? Then weren't they supposed to help take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Yeah, exactly. Call the police. Can't the boys from processing take care of this? No. Why? Think of the boys from processing as murderers, only instead of people they murder crime scenes. Processing's a wrecking crew. They know how to commission off items, how to work the incinerator and the morgue. I know it's hard, but I assure you the others won't come to help us. We could saw off the branch, climb up there and saw off the branch. There has to be a less risky way with less falling down of trees. Um, I can try shooting it down myself. It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks here. He pauses then shrugs. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't hit the victim. I'm gonna need your gun for this. They only have one gun! Whoops. This is the sorriest part of a pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Officer, why do we only have one gun? He asked, carefully loading his pistolet. Remember when I told you I didn't have my badger uniform with me when I woke up? I didn't have my gun either. That's even more unfortunate than the badge. You need to contact your station as soon as possible. Uh, the piece shines... Uh, in his outstretched harm. Try not to lose this one. <laughs> take the gun. Yeah, take it, you fucking banana pook. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Ah, man. Feel the weight of the gun first. The cold piece of bake light and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your finger fits right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, a P9 armistice before at some point. It probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable like you never laid it down. What are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. Point the gun at the belt. Can I point it at Kuno? Uh, the buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground in your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you shoot yourself in your mouth, he hisses. You won't miss. 42%. Close your left eye first. Oh. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, uh, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch and the wind in your shoulder directly directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Look, he's crying, you know! Let's try it. 58. Yaha! Boom! Who is the boss? Me. Uh, the buckle explodes into tiny pieces coming loose with the whirl. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slumped down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you. Looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Who killed you? Communism. Dang it, communism! <laughs> it takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it is right. Then the rigor and the muscles give up. It smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. We gained experience. You've been policed. Ace is high. The lieutenant raises his right hand, waiting for you to slap it. The ace is high. A custom invented by the Aristotic Brigades during the revolution is used to celebrate success in Revachal, especially in sports. The gesture is spread across the world despite the defeat of revolutionaries themselves. You could add an ace's low to it if you want by turning your back after the high and waiting for another. Slap and wait for an ace's low. The high arrives with a sharp slap. As you turn around, there's a moment of doubt. Feels like the low ain't gonna connect? Chill, it's gonna connect. <laughs> but then it does, and with furious precision. Lieutenant's not one to leave an ace's, high, ace's low hanging. I knew these guys, his voice is deeply approving. Yeah, we are. You got a problem with it? He cracks with laughter, sounds like someone strangling a seagull. A clear he enjoys himself. I knew they suck each other off. Uh, we'll perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death, but before, excuse me, he needs to turn away from the corpse. Uh, slumped over the ground like that has not improved the way the corpse smells. The fall seems to have really something deep inside it. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Wait, field autopsy? Uh, crap. All right, two, examination. Three, field autopsy will not be pleasant. Cops are gonna... <laughs> Four and final transport the coroner's case to the district morgue. I'll do that. God, he stinks. Don't we have someone else for the autopsy, like a doctor? No, you and I are detectives. Honorary rank of detective signifies the ability to handle the entire incident. I don't think I'm a detective. With a shooting like that, of course you are. All right. Give him his gun back. Uh, in the meantime, we should try to interview uh, Avert Claire, the leader of the union. Harbor property was clearly used in the hanging. He points to the belt. 
uh, might be a challenging to get in. Yeah, uh, that was one of the guys I started talking to, but then I reloaded it. So, or we could ask around for a representative of the logistics company. My information uh, says the Wild Pines has sent some sort of strike negotiator ring over back control. You could ask the gardener for directions. Is this in the famous lines of initial interviews? Yes. Well then, all right, what was our new thought? Ace is low. Empathy towards Kim. Do I have skill points? Are those my skill points right now? Because if I have skill points, I'd rather use them for something cool. Yeah, you know, like authority. Oh, we do have the skill point. What, what do we want to be? Can I like level up this? No. Endurance, electrochemistry. We do have less though because of our thought. Shivers. Hand-eye coordination, interfacing, composure, logic, encyclopedia, rhetoric, drama. Play the actor, lie, and detect lies. Ooh, rhetoric. Practice the art of persuasion. Conceptualization. Our logic did lose one from thought. What thought lowered logic? Oh, uh, our superstar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of like being a little crazy. I kind of like being super smart, but not the most, you know, uh, you know, a little crazy. Suggestion, charm men and women play the puppet master. So we're negative one on that. I think we should probably focus on something we're already good at. Maybe just another encyclopedia. Man, I don't know. I'm torn on all this. Does this mean I have a point in here? Signature skill. So it's a signature skill. So I think that's why it has one. Interfacing master machines. Pick locks and pockets. Keep your poker, poker face. Sneak under their noses. Eh. Reaction speed. Perception. High ord. High hand eye coordination. I kind of want to level up endurance. Oh, you know what I should level up? My brain. So we don't die so quickly. Hold yourself, keep your morale up. I kind of want that one. Right? Morale. Health. Because I'm assuming one of these gives us extra health. Take the blow. Does that give me more HP? We can level up again somewhere. Apparently we have more points. I'm doing encyclopedia again. Let's get more encyclopedia. And that's all the points we have right now. I'm gonna accept. I'm gonna accept, aha! All right, sweet. So now we're not gonna instantly die, which is great. Uh, let's check the body while it's lying here on the ground. The hangman, he sits in his belt, blah, blah, blah. He adjusts his glasses and take a deep breath. Uh, didn't we already ask this? What's a field autopsy? Uh, you know what a field autopsy, you've done hundreds of them. Actually, it appears I've forgotten what a field autopsy is. Let's get in there. There's truly a time for everything. However, they're lacking hygiene. I select you get in there in a limited capacity. Uh, I don't know, what do you mean? I mean, when I need you, until then, I should handle physical contact and you should take notes. Why or should I take notes? In your paperwork, officer, just fill the field autopsy out. You're not going to believe this. I think I lost my paperwork. <laughs> I only have one paperwork, too. Officer, what haven't you lost? I still have my disco trousers. Yes, barely. I can give you my paperwork. There's an autopsy form there. Several, actually, but only if it helps move things along. Let's work off yours for now. I'm sorry I lost everything. Yes, well. It's okay to cry. Let's work off yours. Right, the autopsy form is near the end. He hands you his notebook. Let's start this. Mm-hmm. Take a peek at his notes. You find Moment as the lieutenant inspects the dead man's fingernail. Just a few glances, the page are filled with a bulky freehand that's nearly illegible. Still, you can make out the case of a curious title. The man with the hole in his head. Ha! Try to understand what the lieutenant has written? Hot no. Check the man with the hole in the head. 
This appears to be a case investigated about three weeks ago, workplace incident. The titular character's wife tried to get compensation. The company was not forthcoming. It's hard to make out if the hole was fatal. Uh, try to understand what the lieutenant's written about the case at hand. It's very hard to draw conclusions. I can make out that he's in a hurry to solve the case. Uh, okay, cool. Cool. If not spelled out explicitly, but the lieutenant fears a terrorist form between uh, the people. Cool. Uh, hot, no. You're probably imagining the notes are very hard to decipher, so don't draw any conclusions from this, but... What? Crap. Uh, it's not a glowing review, sorry to say. The 41st that you refer to comes across somewhat less than competent. It's not explicitly stated the lieutenant doesn't trust you. There's just nothing positive there. Oh, here it is. Open the notebook and the field autopsy form. Gotcha. So because he talked bad about the 41st, we ended up losing it. All right. I got to heal my morale then. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of the skin and the organs in his three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs to be filled out. Begin. Number one, assistant. Sure. That's you. Only the first question and already I don't know the answer. Not... An energetic start to an autopsy, I agree. Pig's messed up. Kuno feels pity. Just leave it empty. Uh, the corpse lies there indifferent to your retrograde amnesia. The next box says, coroner's case number. Eh, write it down. Next, name, N.A., date of birth, N.A., age, roughly 50. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, better air to young on the uh, young side. Okay, I'm going to write 42. I got a success. Race, Mondale. Fair to olive skin from the Isle of Mundi. Uh, this is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish. Write it down. The pudgy mess of a curled meat looks neither Mondal nor anything else. Sex. Freaky fucky! The monster exclaims energetically. Male. Right? Freaky fucky. <laughs> Pig's gonna have sex. I'm gonna write male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly. Uh, date of death? March 4th, 51. What else? Body identified by... I mean, I want to be funny, but I also want to solve the case. You know? You know? I gotta, I gotta actually get stuff done. Body identified. Case number's the same. Blah, blah, blah. Evidence of treatment. None, at least after the initial examination. Uh, what exactly is treatment, anyways? Interfering with the body's position. I'm not sure, didn't the footprints look like he was carried over? They'd have to have incapacitated carried him over. This was more than a match uh, for untrained dock workers. Your central nervous system recognizes the gesture. It's the stations of breath, escalation, or religious in nature. Hold out from pre dolorian burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then we should start the postmortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on its chest. It's no longer meaningful interacts with the surroundings. The thicket of, buckets, of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. All right, let's do one. Examination summary. Clothes. He wears boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Barboudine, I think. Yeah. It's happening. Barboudine, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lured. Write it down. The boots are ceramic. Various enamel. They're fused to his skin. Okay. Write it down. The boot has a serial number. Write it down. Tattoos. Upper torso, tattoo resembling a map of the night. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings. Write it down. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo. Write it down. He produces a measuring tape. well nourished, athletically built measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Write it down. Body hair is light brown. Distribute. Uh, distribution is constant with age. The deceased had a male pattern. Baldness. Hair is coming back short. Uh... Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. The hair under your latex feel, uh, fingers feels uh, cold to the touch, wet. Stroke his hair gently. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair sti uh, start sticking to the latex of the glove, like thread off a ragdoll's head. There must be a brillantine in there. He combed his hair back with oil. Write it down, adding the brillantine. Lividity is consistent with the hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Cool. Uh, you think the Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was F and max. Okay. The lieutenant pays no heed. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest with predation. But a men for high velocity. Nah, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> 
Screw these kids, man. Ligature marks. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling from the belt, he starts cutting into polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring, he concedes, breathless. There's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You just got the right tool for that. Oh, yeah, I'm prepared. Good thing we got these chain cutters. I want to pet the chain cutters. Ah, oh, dang it. I could have healed my morale. <laughs> the hangman lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Uh, always good to think ahead now. He points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature marks blow. Carefully with as much precision as you can. See, my pig going to his head off. No, he ain't. See, looks blasé. Your pig's a born. Yeah, I agree. I'm not your pig. Ugh. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt's equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges of white bread rising from yeast. Uh, success. The knot is the weak spot. Okay. 72. Let's do it. Ah! Okay, you jam the cutters right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. Yeah, somewhere in there. Already they're buried deep in the man's flesh. You rotate them to get a better hold then. Uh, fuck it, you fuck. Lieutenant looks somewhat worried as you summon... Rotate some more. Really, really bad smell coming from there. Cut. Oh, God. God. So, he steps in and takes the chain cutters from you. I should have a go before. I think I have a strategy. I'm gonna let him work. He sinks the cutters in with his elbow. Snap, the knot is slashed. Another cut, and the belt falls apart. Cool. Here, he hands you the chain cutters back. Woo! And then kneels closer to the body, running his fingers along the dark red groove until he comes to a gap. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature marks. This suspension point is the back of the neck, or the nave. Okay. Hemorrhaging observed on the skin uh, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is pronounced consistent with drop from 1 to 1.5 meter. Chest is intact. Normal contour. Abdomen is pro, uh, protrubent. Pelvis intact. Uh, genitalia. Now it's gonna happen. <laughs> Gentilly is male and unremarkable, no evidence of energy. Inspect it. The dead man's penis is average size, congested from the downward con uh, collection of blood. Testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The gentilly is greenish, marbling. Uh, that's gross. Right down to move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn up the corpse on his side. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There's a combat energy uh, injuries on the right and blah, blah, blah. I see small residual scars. Okay. From the wounds sustained over two, maybe three decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Okay. Uh-huh. We have a real museum here of battle wars. Write it down. Last item, hands. He takes the man's right hand in his, inspects it, moves on. Pick up the hand. Uh, the hand feels heavy, filled with decay liquids, like it's ready to explode if you squeeze hard enough. You're suddenly repulsed so much you feel compelled to drop it. Hands are clean, no sign of energy, injury. Were we expecting any? I was. Write it down. Woo, he turns to the side to breathe, that's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. That's all for the external, well done. What next? Internal. Central nervous system, he says, and then concludes abruptly, I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there's a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to the story. If I had a moral to the story, what would that be? The dead man also looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of the story. The brain's vulnerable to the compromises in its blood supply. Lieutenant grins. I think that may be the morale, moral of every story officer. All right, N.A. <laughs> Good. Muscular skeleton purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protrubent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear cracks in the lieutenant's move as he, uh, as the mo lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside flesh, like creaking of a little house at night. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> Uh, the bone is fractured. The rest of the uh, system is intact. Back hunch as if prayers he began to pry open the dead man's jaw. Both hands are used. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim received dental implants. A look inside the mouth. No scream or sign of relief rises from the darkness. It's human there. Look deeper inside. Whoops. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat, a, contra a contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach into your mouth. You're forced to swallow just to keep looking. Okay. Inside, you see darkness, just a mess of meat and darkness. Mute sounds as always. Write it down. He wipes his breath. Uh, wait, why don't we have anything? Are you an expert? It means liver and gallbladder means bile ducts. Am I an expert in these things? Nothing your alcohol-soaked memory directs you to having forensic expert. 
I don't think so. And that's it? That's it. Right NA. Same for toxicology. Both? Unless you have an untapped reservoir of knowledge there. Do I? Reservoirs? No, but they do take an obscure uh, trivia and odd tidbits. Would that help? No. The completionist in me still wonders if there's something we could do. Like a toxicology screening? He looks at the monster at this stage. I doubt we'll find anything, even if he was burned with cocaine, but you should add a request. Okay. Cardiovascular. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. Okay. This will do. Then he touches the corpse's blow at her mint, uh, abdomen. Uh, digested semisol food in the stomach. Voila. Voila. I'm gonna admit it. Description of injuries. Okay. Be thorough. What have... What about the injuries we have afflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? This is a team effort. You mean the incision on the thorax? That was not a team effort. Uh... So, I agree, the waters are muddy enough. Okay, now injuries. Bite marks, write it down. Uh, in your opinion, officer, beneath this description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Non-fatal. Agreed. Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. Uh, yeah, at maximum velocity. He's confessed to causing it. Write it down. Non-fatal, post-mortem. And then, right, ligature marks. A dark red uh, braid ligature mark uh, encircling the neck. This was the choke one. So below the note, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was fatal injury. That's it. He cracks an uneasy smile. We've established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much uh, to be questioned, but it's a start. Hey, 70. So he produced a small black plastic roll from his jacket or body bag. Let's wrap this up, pronounce this field autopsy over. How'd it go? Well, we established probable cause of death. Someone say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicology screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple weeks if we're lucky. I would not hold my breath. We were thorough on the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was professional field autopsy. Sweet. Now, he pockets it. Uh, and I now we put him in a body bag, and I drive him for processing. Lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then his notebook, then the corpse again. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Tell me who you are, dead man. Come on. Come on. Ah! You must be losing your mind. Search the body. Perception. Crap. Look in his pants again. Can you... Do you think we missed? Yeah, there's something we're not seeing. All right, well, we're in liver mortis here. He's disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. Uh, where do we find a fridge for the body? It'd have to be industrial in size. Uh, and his gaze settled on Kuno, but only if all else fails. Uh, okay. Let's hurry then. It's one task with every hour we find becoming harder. So we need to fridge the body. Okay, I'm good. I'm good with this. I'm good with this. I'm good with this. And we got everything back. So let's go. Let's go try fridging the body. We are quite hurt and quite insane right now, which is, you know, never good. What? I just hovered over something. Maybe it's just a fence? Hmm. I still need to track the cars. Oh, crap. This was the entrance. Yo, 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 yo. Come on. Hey, people. Maybe he'll be happy when I tell him that the girl quit because, you know, not because of him. Maybe he'll like me more, and then he'll let me refrigerate the body. That's the hope. Who are you? I didn't see you before. What's up? Uh -huh. Hi. Uh... I talked to Sylvie. She left because of me, not you. Wait, what? But what about the bird? The bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing in the morning. She left. She didn't break it. I did. I threw it against the wall. You broke the skua? I assure you it was him. Why on earth did you have to break my skua? I just break things. It's the way I am. I, I can't believe it. I was so sure of Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was sending me a message, symbol of hope and all. A tender toe of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. Ah, all right. He uh, calms himself. Did she say anything else about me? Did she say anything about me? She said she was flattered. Really? I, I should I should give her a call then. Yes. Aha. 
All right, so we gained some experience. Thank you. Was there anything else you wanted? We got a new skill point. I need to be uh, in the need of a fridge. Yes, for the dead body. You want me to put a dead corpse in my fridge, right? Correct him. No, we want to put a very important dead body into the fridge. I, I don't care. You're not putting a dead body in my fridge. I'm not going to even ask why. Why? Because this is culinary establishment, not a morgue. I can't believe you asked me. It would only be for a... Lieutenant, you too... He can't believe it. You're asking me too? The answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. Crap. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we have to find a sad banger, then we sing this place of shit. Alright, uh... What if we just go put it in here anyways? Hello, Mr. Cook. The thin man smoking... Uh, below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from a mug. This must be the cook. As you step in, he nods towards the table and says something completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Gorsi and Kubek. Uh, okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please do not call him Gorsi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. Ah, uh, Gorsi, I have some questions. The man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. I need a fridge to store the corpse. The man keeps shaking his head. His eyes seem sad. I don't think he understands. We need to find some way to make him understand. Wait, what language is he speaking? He's from Grod. He's from the Grod. People from the Grod don't mind if they're called by their derogatory. It's okay to call him the Kojuk. Uh, I need the corpse. Point to Kim and into the fridge. I need to put a dead body in the fridge. Oh! No, no, no. Body no fit fridge. Fridge small. Maybe it's a small body. I know. Okay, so we need a bigger fridge. You got some impressive pots. I don't need anything else. Okay, whatever. Aroma, sweet. The dishes are drying. Is there anything else in here? Uh, the blue door is painted blue. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door to the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The winch outside in the backyard? Remember? No, your fingers do. There was a winch outside. On the roof, like to a small elevator. Hmm, well, if there's a winch, I suppose we can look into it. Side investigation. It's hardly a side investigation. You already have a name for it. Yes, it's a mini side investigation. No, the door is a mega investigation. I'm calling it behind the blue door. <laughs> or the investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. If you say so, boom. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to touch it later. By the way, let's use our skill point before we get too far. So... I kind of like the idea of, let's get some more HP. Okay, it doesn't heal us up, but it does put us out of the danger range. Maybe, maybe I should have done the Volition uh, again, just so our morale was up one higher, but eh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So I still need to find a place to store the dead body. And their kitchen's not big enough. Uh, I'm wondering if they talked about, where was the other ones? Ask around, Whirling Frit, Frite, or maybe Kuno. I don't want to ask Kuno. I don't want to ask Kuno. I don't want to ask Kuno. Hey, buddy, do you know where a fridge is? I know you hate both of us, too. Looking for something, Hunt? Huh? Nope, he doesn't know about that. We could go over and talk to these people about a fridge. But we hadn't really talked to them yet, so I feel like that's going to be a long conversation. And I would rather not engage in that long conversation right now. Hey, I need a fridge. Um, is this about the questions? Do you have a fridge? I don't really know anything. Right behind you, she nods towards the muzzy machine. You're right, that is a fridge. Wicked. Yes, she's not really paying attention. I need to store a corpse there. Um, she keeps chewing her gum, you're joking right. Uh, measure the fridge with your fingers, one eye closed. No, I'm not joking. I need to store a corpse in the hanging man in your fridge. Um, okay. It wouldn't even fit, you know. Now I'm looking at it. Maybe a glass door fridge in a public grocery store isn't the best option. <laughs> Come on! Pity, it would be so beautiful. Yeah, I don't know. She returns her magazines. Crap. Uh, I think it would fit. I think it would fit. We're gonna have to ask Kuno. Uh, of all the things I don't want to do, it's talk to Kuno. I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna, we should save, we should save, because most likely Kuno's gonna make us want to quit our job. <laughs> I can almost guarantee it. You think the bookstore lady has? Hey, do you have a fridge? Hi, Ace Detective. 
You would have to know where a good fridge is? A fridge, yeah, like a big, big fridge a cop could put a dead body into. Ha! You mean like an ice bear fridge? Man, that's scary. Ice bear fridge? Yeah, like a bear, but white. There's a fridge below the building in the basement. She points underground. Aha! I went back there once, behind the bookstore. Mom doesn't want me to go there anymore, and not that I want to. It's pretty scary. And there's a big fridge there? Yes. One more thing, how do I get inside the building? The only way in is through the bookstore, but my mom's pretty strict about not letting anyone in. But I don't know, you're a policeman, she says with the admiration. Maybe you can convince her. All right, sweet. You're awesome, chick. I am totally going to get you from the... I'm going to get your mom to put you inside here. As soon as I get my fridge. As soon as I get my fridge. Hey, I need to take care of this fridge here quickly, please. Welcome to Hi, welcome to Crumb, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Valencia. My name is Playson. She was talking. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Before we go on, you seem to be very well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. I disagree. I like money. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. I don't like her. Certainly, there are good things to be said about dependence. It would forge ties between us working people, good practices for fighting a common enemy. You must understand me, I'm a powerful feudal lord. I demand tribute. This is about traditions. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Tribute? Power? These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. Well, whatever. Are you I the owner? Am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. I was told there was a huge fridge in the cellar. Can you lead me there? A fridge? She fidgets about with her pendant? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? Uh, for whatever reason, she's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. All right. We got an auto save. I'm coming to come back and yell at you here in a little while. Uh, you see a tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sure, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hands uh, has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talesmen. Par, psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open that. I won't be held responsible for consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books? I've heard there's a fridge there. That's what I need. Everybody suddenly needs something from there. Is this about the curse? Uh, no, it's just a storeroom. I told you, please step away. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Please don't go there. I can't allow that. You only make things worse and unleash the powers. But I sense this place is calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? She grabs her pendant again, visibly shaken. My god, even more reasons to not mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Um, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the curtains she tries to draw you away from, uh, the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembling from bones, sticks, and straws inside a discerning fish head with empty sockets stare at you. From the looks of this, is traditional Seminese ward meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, and curses. Uh, who are the Seminese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ignore the curtains for now. I will be back. If I can't get in another way, I am going to rip those open. There is that gate over to the side. I'm wondering if I can access it now. If not, we might have to open the curtains. I'm afraid, though, it's just going to make me go crazy. And I'm just going to instantly die. Let me in. Budge. You think we could get in the back way? No. Nope. <sighs> we know there's a fridge Fuck down there. Okay? He doesn't say... There's nothing about the fridge there. Alright, screw it. 
Time to rip it open. Let's go. I af I am afraid of no spirit. I am afraid of no ghost. I think maybe there's a way around in through there. I don't want to examine any of this stuff. I just want to see if there's another way into this building. It doesn't look like it. All right, come back up here. I wonder how big the map is on this game. Hi, I'm here to rip open the curtain. I apologize immediately for the spirits that I'm gonna unleash. Quick save. Rip it open. It's the only way in. Uh, rip them apart. You rip them apart this time for real. You see a dim lit, dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back covered in dozens of scary little seminese words. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you are unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Okay, have fun with that. All right, this is kind of cool. Ghostly silhouette of hair dryers. Uh, that looks like the, the demon from Portrait of a Man. That looks like the demon from uh, Death Note. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. <laughs> All right, shut the door. A warded door, a heavy door with missing handles stands before you, covered in dozen, if not hundreds, of seventies trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Knock on the door. Only an echo, no one's there. Well, that sucks. Glad we got the extra HP, man. Oh, shoot. What moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know things like that hurt? My God. This really wasn't my best idea. I deserve this. My body deserves to suffer for being weak and disappointing. I is that blood I'm seeing? Please don't cry. Please don't cry. I don't want anyone to see me. Uh, I deserve this. Are you all right? The lieutenant steps closer, his eyes soft and worried. This looked pretty intense and painful, I must admit. What's going on in there? Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer. You can hear her frightened step backwards. Don't tempt the spirits or you'll damage the holy wards on the door. Um. Well, crap. Well, crap. Yes. Yo, how are we going to get into this freaking door, man? I might have to talk to her to get into this door. Hi, I need into that door. You've hurt yourself now. I told you not to mess around back there. What are you even trying to accomplish, you fool? I thought it was obvious. I tried to smash through the door by using pure physical force. I'm trying to find a way to the fridge. It's urgent police matters. You're only making things worse. Stop it. Be compelled to look at the books she fiddles with her pendant. Go to them. Uh, what if I want to buy a book? Goodness, you're already doing good browsing the shelves. Why'd you stop? Don't you feel compelled? What types of books do you have? Okay. The girl mentioned a curse. Curse? Who said that, Ned? I'll have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It is robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What's in God's name is she talking about? Your daughter's the one standing outside the thing. Yeah, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again. No, she was definitely uh, not slacking off. Oh, she was definitely... Whoops. Sorry. No, she was looking. Wonderful, did you talk to her? Yes. Great, on a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy? 10. She was awesome. I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Ah, eh, 10. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. She immediately satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as in my net. Uh, the way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. I'm, about to, I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. She rolls her eyes. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends how much do you pay the kid. Good sir, what does a young child do with money anyways? No, I'll save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out here. Such criminal behavior would not happen in a more developed country. Two felonies, child labor, and slavery. The, those countries will realize they've raised lazy, spoiled generation. Uh, are we done with the jokes now? The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. Denial is the way. All this pressure's made her anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. I told her not to do that. Clearly, I have no idea how to raise a girl. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can. She has enough willpower. Come on, ma'am. Obviously, she can't do anything about it. You're placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. Uh, that is true, and obviously, the will of the market, but maybe make an exception for your daughter. Yeah, it's actually super all right for kids to chew all their hands off. Forget I say anything. What you're doing is wrong. Even I know that, and I usually don't know anything. 
<laughs> uh, she's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. All of a sudden, she exhales, exhales sharply, her shoulders slump down. Oh, no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There, she returns with a nod. I don't know what to say. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what mother called a dull mind. All the stress she chops, uh, but her mom mouth keeps moving. Is this husband her father? Yes, my husband's successful entrepreneur east of the river. Uh, what's that? It's a proper place to live. Breakthrough imminent. Nice. And your husband also involved with the bookstore? He's made an initial investment. He's a silent partner now. Is she an only child? Yes. We couldn't afford more children, really. Uh, why not? Quite busy people. Children are a lot of work. Okay. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the sword takes off. All right, I have something else in mind. Farewell. Rhetoric, hey, psst, look around. Psst, hey you, who me? Yeah, you, we're down the streets, you're ready to start building communism again. Again? Yeah, you're ready to start building communism again. You built it before, they built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet, but now there has love. Should we just stop building love too? Can't argue with that. Let's do communism, man. It's like communism. So what about it? All that communism you promised to build? Word on the streets, you've woken up a thousand years of slumber promising to erect a version of communism many times greater than they attempted before. Is this true? How come there's a word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the burger, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, and pay all the people of more than 25 real in their pocket. Uh, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political feet. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like me. That sounds like me. That sounds like me. Funky style, very funky. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get down to it? Roll up your sleeves. Opt in. Opt in. Oh yeah, get the firing squad and the animal wagons ready. Roll up your sleeves. Breathe in the pristine air. Boom. Let's do it. Ah, uh, let's freaking do it, man. Communism for the win. We also thought complete long, some long way home. Here we go, home awaits. Walk past Station 41 through the market, past the bougie, uh, the boo, wait, the boogie street, spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store of the corner, there at the end of the street, lined with pine trees, a small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, and so are the people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? What's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's what you have now. So, we learned our perception cap to five, and speed gives one psyche. Cool. I need skill points so I can unlock uh, the social economies. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its comeuppance 40 years ago. A fever that shook the world never to return again. They were right until he woke up today. A spiritual corpse responding only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes, and Cross Mazab. For him, communism is still a thing. He'll single-handedly raise the commune of O2 from the oceanic trench where it has been resting, covered in ghosts and seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come witness his attempt to rebuild communism in the year 51. I am a... I will be a feminist superstar communist cop nothing sounds bad about that one bit so where's the girl hey can you break me in please i'm sorry sir i can't talk right now i have so I much homework you just can't homework. win i have so much homework now what are you missing here why does this feel familiar hey because you know each other she's been talking to you openly because you've talked before We've met before. Yes, I used to stand out there all the time before Mother told me to focus on my homework. You've been running all around week with your shirt on, sir, telling people about being a star or something. <laughs> Did I ever talk to you? Of course, you stopped by a few times. You certainly looked better the last time than the last time I saw you. Thanks, I'm trying. Yeah, I can see you don't have party eyes anymore. Lieutenant, party eyes. Yes, of course, that makes sense. You know, like a cat in the dark, all big, uh, big eyed, big wide eyed certainly looks odd for a man. The swiveling eyes of a lonely drug addict. That's what she meant. Cool. Yeah, you should get some party eyes right now. Yeah? Does that mean I've been partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. Uh, thanks, I've been learning about a myself a lot. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to. I didn't really like... She gives you a rather concerned look. 
I guess we can change the subject. I didn't mean to bring you down. She's doing math now. What is it? She found a hat. I thought this would fit you. She gives you a hat. Almost like one Dick Mullen wears. Like a thanks for helping me out. Woo! Yeah! Yes, yeah, just like Dick Mullen. You'll get more serious. Okay, thank you. Sweet, we got a freaking hat. That's all that matters now. Give me the hat. It gives us plus one encyclopedia. Oh my god. <laughs> we are a baller. All right, with that, we're going to wrap this episode up now that we are a little more prestigious uh, prestigious officers. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, and show your support. Somehow I got to figure out how to get in this door, but I don't know. So until then, later, everyone.